Round seven of the Ground Tracks Northern Off-Road Championship would see the crews head to Broadbottom for the first time in a number of years. Plenty of work had gone into the venue before the weekend to get it race ready. And as the venue was owned by British champion Martin Gold, you could bet it was going to be a challenge. Onto the first day of what would be set to be a bit of a gruelling competition then. And as was maybe expected, fastest out of the blocks would be Martin Gold. The British cross-country champion would, of course, be a benchmark for the Northern Off-Road Championship cruise this weekend. Adrian Marfell would be out racing with the championship for the first time and things were going well. Second place at this stage, a little way back from the lead, but in a battle for that second place after the first three runs of the opening day. Chasing down Marfell would be Simon and Jack Adams. Problems with the new car on the previous events had meant limited time in the driver's seat, but things were going well so far with third and only a few seconds back and very much in that fight with Marfell. With a change of class for Adams, it will be Ian Gregg leading the way in class two this weekend. A good start for him, fourth place overall, and with a good lead in that position as well, despite the buggy clearly only having rear wheel drive at one point and causing some very interesting lines to try and get around the course. Warren Roper and Ken Andrews make a good start to the day. The car underpowered compared to some of the others in the top of our leaderboard, but that would just make the times all the more impressive and all the more spectacular out there on the course as well. Fifth place for now. Aston and Martin Cox would be a little way back on the lead compared to what they were used to, but they were doing enough at the moment to keep themselves in the hunt going into day two. Sixth place overall for now, fifth in the class. And they'd be followed closely by this man, Ben Duckworth, leading the way in class six at the end of the day and just eight seconds back from Cox. Second in that class would be Ben Gill, 22 seconds back from Duckworth, but still well within the fight for that class lead going into the second day of the competition. With Ian Gregg out in the lead of class two, it would be up to Chris Speakman to try and keep the rest of the class at bay. Second place for now and in ninth place overall. And rounding out the top 10 at the end of the opening day would be Mark Calzoni. Third place in class two would be his as well, just less than half a minute back from Speakman up ahead. Taking a look at some of the positions outside of the top 10 leaderboard, it will be fourth in class two for Huggy Farmer and Richard Rawlinson. Hunting down Calzoni and that top 10 position with only seven seconds difference between the pair. And for Mark and Sarah Kaisley, meanwhile, it will be fifth in the class themselves. A further seven seconds back from Farmer up ahead in the class and overall leaderboards. Alan Kirkland, meanwhile, ends the day with third in class six, 13th overall. It would be the lead in class nine for Tim Sagar. A small brush with a tree would be a reminder of how slippery and tricky the course could be, but that wasn't going to stop him pushing on through day two. Becca Clarkson enlists the help of Simon Kerfoot in the co-driver's seat this weekend. Simon, a British champion, so a good result would hopefully be on the cards for the pair. For now, though, they lie sixth in the class, 16th overall. Mark Jacks doesn't get off to the start that he would have wanted coming here. Times on the second and third run were better, though, so he ends the day as a result with fourth in class six, 17th overall. Keith Lynham, meanwhile, starts the event well in class eight, leading the way there over a closely fought class at the end of the opening day of racing. For Steve Hill, it was a strong second place in class nine, a little way back from Sagar in the class lead, but there were plenty more runs to try and turn that around on day two. And this weekend will be the first time out in almost a year for Simon Lee and Jonathan Wood. 
they end the day with second place in class eight. Surprised at how they were going considering the lack of time in the car. Bradley Hall and Ellie Hartley were struggling a little with some of the tighter corners on the course due to how slippery things were. They would be glad of the improving conditions over day two then and a chance to try and push a little more. Third in class eight was theirs for now though and a night of staring at that weather forecast. And fourth in that class at the end of the day will be James Stubbins, 14 seconds back from Hall at this stage. Just a couple of crews in contention of class one and it will be the lead for James Lyle, taking a good advantage in that class at this stage too. And for James Lofthouse, it will be fifth place in class eight. The times in the class were fairly close, so that could all change going into day two. Class four would be another handful of crews in contention and leading the way there at the end of day one would be James Pate, first in the class, sixth overall. Things were going well now as well for David Nutter, second in that class was his, no issues to report and with only five seconds separating the whole of the class, he would be looking to take that lead on day two, as would a few others. Tom and Sam Smith will be the only ones in class three this weekend. So as long as they could keep things going to the end, that result would be theirs. But on a course like this, with weather conditions like these, that in itself is a tall ask. The class nine results, meanwhile, were spread out a little this weekend and it would be third in the class for Mark Walker going into day two. There'd be a bit of bad luck in store for Ben Middleton and Steph Taylor. They get stuck on one of the climbs on the opening run, eventually getting going again, but not before collecting a tree. Sadly, there's no video of the tree due to our cameraman having to help pull it from the front of the car and get them on their way. They end the day with second in class three. For Alan Bland, it will be second in class one, a little way off the class lead, but still going strong at the end of the tricky opening day. Day one then, we'd see some crews having trouble as we've seen so far. For Willie Stubbs, it was retirement on run three when the car came to a halt on the course. It would go no further from this point. And there'd be some bad luck as well for Simon Rood, catching another car on the course and going into one corner too fast, putting the buggy on its side. So as expected, day one was a gruelling affair. Plenty of challenge and plenty of attrition as well. Those that completed the course make up the top of the results like this. On to day two then, and the good news would be that the conditions seemed to be getting better. However, one thing that hadn't changed over the morning's runs would be the lead for Martin Gold, continuing to lead his own event with a significant advantage. The results below that though would change. We lose Adrian Marfell from the results when a small part on the car breaks, causing retirement from that second place that he'd held on day one. So with retirement comes promotion, with disappointment comes new opportunity. That left the door open for some more changes in the podium positions. And moving their way up to second would be Warren Roper and Ken Andrews. A great end to the morning for the pair. Things were also looking a little better now for Aston and Martin Cox too. They reached the end of the morning's runs in the podium positions, third place overall and in the class. Things were still going well for Simon and Jack Adams meanwhile. None of the problems that had prevented them from finishing the previous rounds were rearing their heads. There was a lot more to do in the new car, but clearly he was getting to grips with it fast. Fourth overall for now. Ben Gill gains a few places over Sunday morning's runs as well, moving up to take fifth overall and now moving into the class six lead. This was no Sunday drive. That move into the class lead for Gill would of course mean a drop to second in the class for Ben Duckworth. The fight wasn't over yet though, not by a country mile, with only two seconds separating them going into the afternoon. 
Times for Mark Jacks will be improving a lot on day two. He moves right back up the results and into seventh overall, gaining a place in the class to take third, as well as closing in on those ahead. One of the most impressive changes in the class battles, though, would be for Mark and Sarah Kaisley. A combination of things would see them change their fifth place in class into the class lead, ending the morning with eighth overall as well. Perhaps significant, one of the losses from that class would be our overnight leader, Ian Gregg, managing two runs on day two before retiring from the event. Alan Kirkland gains some time on the overall leaderboard, ending the morning with ninth place. Despite this move, though, his class position would drop due to the advance of others around him. Fourth place in class six was his for now. And rounding out the top 10 now were Huggy Farmer and Richard Rawlinson. They happily changed their class position as well, moving up to second in the class at the midpoint of day two. There's no change though to the lead in class nine. Tim Sagar continuing to hold on to that position after the morning's runs, moving up the overall leaderboard into 11th place as well. And things were going particularly well for Jason Noakes on day two, moving up the overall leaderboard into 12th and up the class results to take third in class two for now. We see no problems for Becca Clarkson and Simon Kerford either. Things all going well for the pair as they end the morning with a strong 13th place overall, fourth in the class. Becca expecting big things from the man in that co-driver's seat. No change in the class for Keith Lynham, keeping hold of that class lead throughout the second morning of competition and moving his way into 14th overall. The new engine still going well. It was a good morning so far for Bradley Hall and David Wormsley. Bradley taking all of the driving this weekend as Dad Spencer was on timing duties. Frustratingly for Simon Lee and Jonathan Wood, with the drying conditions came a slip down the results slightly. As they had expected as well, they end the morning with third in class eight as well as 16th overall. James Lofthouse, though, gains a place in the class over the morning runs, moving up to take fourth in the class now. Importantly, gaining a few places on the overall leaderboard as well, into 17th. Problems on run six would unfortunately see Mark Calzoni slipping down the leaderboard. He ends the morning with fifth in class two, losing his top 10 spot for 18th. That close battle in class four would now have a new leader. David Nutter going well and taking that class lead as well as moving up to 19th overall. And there'd be a little time gained for Tom Wood, moving up to fifth in the class now, 20th overall. For James Pate, there'd be a move down to second in the class. That move, of course, at the expense of David Nutter, who now leads the way in class four. The gap between them, a little bigger now. No change to class one though, James Lyle still leading the way there from 23rd on our leaderboard. It's Mark Walker meanwhile gaining a place in class nine, moving up to second in the class at this stage after the loss of Steve Hill from the results. And there's no change for Alan Bland. Second in class one was his and lying in 29th place overall. No change to the class three battle either. Tom and Sam Smith keeping hold of the lead in the class going into the final runs of the event. And for Ben Middleton and Steph Taylor, it would still be second in that class. They did have an overheating issue to contend with costing them a few maximum times and not helping their overall times either. So with just a few runs remaining this weekend, the results at the top of our leaderboard look like this. On to the final stages of the event then, and it will be 28th overall for Ben Middleton and Steph Taylor. The car running okay for the rest of the day after their overheating issues early on. 
they also take the Class 3 victory. There'd been no change in the class though for Alan Bland. Second in Class 1, his at the end of the event as well as 26th place on the overall leaderboard. Alan Kirkland meanwhile ends the event with 4th in Class 6. That class position not changing, however, the overall result would dropping down the order out of the top 10 into 25th place with a maximum on the final run of the day. For Mark Walker, it would be second place in class nine to end the event. No change there from how he'd been running earlier, just gaining a single place on the overall leaderboard to finish 23rd. And it would be the class one victory for James Lyle. That place hadn't really looked in threat at all this weekend, nor had it looked in doubt from the start. It was confirmed with a finish in 22nd overall. Meanwhile, there would be no gaining back the lead in class four through the afternoon runs for James Pate. He has to settle for second in the class. A good end to the event still, and a good fight as well, 21st overall. Tom Wood ends the event with fifth in class eight. The time's improving as the day went on. And after taking the lead in class four this morning, it would be a class victory for David Nutter by the end of the event. No problems and an enjoyable weekend to take that class win. There's yet more change in class two though. We see Chris Speakman jumping up to take fifth place in the class at the end of the event. Simon Lee and Jonathan Wood will be more than happy with their results at the end of two days of racing. They'd be looking into some upgrades on the car now to allow them to push even harder without fear of breaking the many standard parts on the car. They do, though, end the event with fourth in the class, 16th overall. Impressive, considering that. For James Lofthouse, it would be third in the class, just over half a minute ahead of Lee at the end of the event in 15th. And a puncture towards the end of the day for Bradley Hall and Ellie Hartley would be cause for concern. The pair didn't have a spare with them. Thankfully though, the loan of a wheel from a fellow competitor would see them through the final runs and taking second in class eight. But taking victory in that class would be Keith Lynham. A good end to the weekend for him, taking 13th place overall as well. It was fair to say it had been a great weekend for Becca Clarkson and Simon Kerfoot. The feeling in the car was good, the times reflecting that as well. Fourth place in class two for the pair, ending the event not far outside a very competitive top 10 leaderboard with 12. Just ahead of Clarkson and Kerfoot on the overall and class times will be this man Jason Noakes. Third in class two, 11th place overall. For Tim Sagar though, it will be the class nine victory. He also rounds out the top 10 overall at the end of the event. Huggy Farmer and Richard Rawlinson gain some time to move a little further inside the top 10. They end the day with ninth, taking second in the class with it. But taking that class two victory this weekend, was this pairing of Mark and Sarah Casley. A great run for them this weekend to take the class victory and eighth place overall. Mark Jacks couldn't change anything else on the results this weekend, despite a desperate attempt. He settles for seventh place on the overall leaderboard, third in class six. Second in that class would belong to Ben Gill. Sadly, that move down in the class from the lead this afternoon would also see him lose a place overall finishing at the end of two days of competition in sixth. It was a puncture on run 10, costing Simon and Jack Adams a little time, especially on the steeper climbs of the course. They end the event with the class five victory though, and fifth overall. The important part of that being the fact that the new car gets them to the finish for the very first time. There'd be some time gained in the final stages for Ben Duckworth. He moves up to fourth place overall, of course, moving into the class six lead to take the victory at the end of the event. And for Aston and Martin Cox, it would be the final step on the podium this weekend. But that result would soon be in the back of their minds. The finish here this weekend, 
means the pair take victory for the 2018 season. They leave round seven as 2018 Ground Tracks Northern Off-Road Champions. The title decided, we're back to the results from this weekend. It will be second place for Warren Roper and Ken Andrews. They had throttle issues in the second half of the day, sticking open at 3,000 RPM to be exact. Never ideal. They do though manage a rough repair, getting that down to around 2,000 RPM, making it to the finish in one piece. But taking victory this weekend, and quite fittingly for the use of his land, perhaps you might say, would be Martin Gold. A great weekend's racing would see him take victory by over three minutes at the end of the event. So confirmation then of the results from the end of a tricky and exciting event. Yeah, it's been really good to be honest. Um, we uh, we own the land and we've uh, you know invited the club to uh, hold this event here. And it would touch and go a bit with the rain all last week, um, but it's uh, the sun popped out this morning and it's it's managed to make it run. So yeah, yeah, I mean a bit of an advantage having the uh, you know knowing the land, but uh, still got to finish. The car's still got to be reliable, and uh, we've managed to pull it off, and we've got the win. Yeah, it's been been a good weekend. Um, had a few issues on Saturday with hairpins and running the smaller engine. It didn't like it and kept stalling and things. Um, but yeah, it's dried out today and put some good times in, and yeah, ended up with a with a good result. Yeah, well, it's been an eventful year. We've had a, a lot of issues. Reliability has been on our side, to be fair, because there's been silly little mistakes all year. Apart from that, it's been absolutely incredible. So Dad and I have worked really well as a team. Um, and it's worked really well. So uh, it feels really good, eh? Not bad. Not Very bad. Good. Yeah, so sharing the driving, obviously one driving one day, one driving the other. That's fairly unique in this championship, but it's obviously worked for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's worked, worked fairly well. There's been a few fraught moments at home and uh, as you'd expect with father and son, but we've got on well. He's navigated for me. Um, I can't sit actually as a passenger and just froze my head, so he's had a, another navigator when he's been racing. But I've been out um, on the first day and set the bar for him, and uh, the little bugger is on out the next day and um, taking time out of me all the time. But um, yeah, it's it's gone well. Hi, my name's Ugly from TikTok Racing. So I'd just like to congratulate you both for winning the championship. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, Huggy. Feel like an old doggy. <laughs> Next up, the crews head to Parkwood Off-Road Centre for the final round of the season. The title may have been decided this time out, but there were still plenty of places to be decided. And of course, plenty of fun to be had out there on the off-road courses. We will, of course, be there to bring you all of the action. So keep an eye on our page over the coming weeks. And in the meantime, thank you for watching Special Stage.